DeadRedCoach.com. Small caps Rexus leads to trouble. But here's how this talented surgeon rescues the case. So our guest surgeon here is Dr. Murat Erdag from Turkey. And you can see this is an eye that's a smaller eye and not the best dilation. And a small Rexus is going to happen here. Now we sped up the video two times normal speed just to show you everything. But can you guess, even at the beginning, what's going to be the complication that we're going to encounter here with a small pupil, small rexus. What would your guess be? Just think about that. So you can see dilation is a little bit better. Maybe some um, phenylephrine or epinephrine was placed inside the AC. Maybe some lidocaine. That can help get the pupil a little bigger. So now it has dilated a little bit more. There's a little air bubble and some tripan blue dye. That can be helpful as well. And then now washing that out. And let's get the viscoelastic in. Let's get this thing going. So... In a case like this, again, a small rex is the only case where I really want a smaller baby size rex is, is a case where I'm worried about the eye while staying in the capsule bag. Again, that would be post vitrectomy eye, or actually, pardon me, an eye that's having a combined cataract and retina surgery, so it'll be um, a gas bubble in the eye, and that may cause some posterior pressure, and you don't want that to push the eye while optic out of the bag. Or a glaucoma uh, case, you doing combined phaco trab, let's say, and the post-op period, the patient gets hypotenuse, the pressure in the eye goes very low, and the AC collapses. And then you're stuck with a situation where you don't want the eye while optic to pop out of the bag. And so in those cases, yeah, I'll do a four and a half millimeter rexus. But look at that. With this much dilation, I would have liked a larger rexus. I would have made this rexus much larger, coming up close to that pupil margin. But you can still do the case here. I wanted to show you this case to to examine what are the reasons behind this complication that we're going to get. And that's, again, the reasons primarily the small rectus. But also, how do you recover from it? How do you finish the rest of the case? So here it is, small rectus going with a phaco probe, cleaning up some anterior lens material. Looks like some sort of chopper or Sinsky type thing in the other hand. And let's see our technique here is going to be buzzing in. It's probably a chop technique. A little bit of like a vertical or a combo chop. That looks good. And then chopping it again. And remember I told you on yesterday's video, watch carefully the rexus and see it doesn't move a lot. And that will give you an idea of how much stress you're putting on that zonular support there. So removing the cataract pieces. I haven't seen the complication yet, have you? And so let's take out the next piece. The next one's coming out. All right, about a hemi-nucleus is left in the back. Let's take that one out. Here's another quadrant. We can sub-chop sub it or split it again. All looks pretty good. And here we go. Last big, big piece of nucleus. Bringing this up and again, further chopping and removing it. So far, so good. So where's our complication? Because this definitely is trouble. That's the name of the video. So you know it's going to be something. So let's watch carefully. As the last nuclear piece is removed, what do we notice? We notice... A run out. Look at that. Right under the phaco probe in the subincision area, you have the rexus has run out or split pretty widely. Now, how do you finish the case? There's still a little bit of lens cortex in the eye that we want to remove. So I'm going to go in here. It looks like a bimanual approach. Do that area last. So going to the other areas first, I like that. That's a good idea. And since it's bimanual, have full access and you can um, split the hand pieces. And switch hands. So not switching hands. But that one area, which is kind of the sub-incisional space, that's where the rexus ran out or ripped. And you got to be very careful. So now when you fill the eye with the viscoelastic, do not overfill it. A reasonable degree of fill. Fill it all the way, but don't overpressurize it. Because that may cause a weakness in the capsule edge to zip back towards the posterior capsule. Now when placing the eye well in the bag you got to be gentle, super cautious. You don't want to do a lot of manipulation in the bag. So delivering it, here comes the lens. You want to just be pushed right in the capture bag with minimal effort, minimal rotation. And if you can, get the haptics about 90 degrees away from the area of run out. And here it's maybe 30, 45 degrees away. And now look at that. I like that technique that removing some viscoelastic by just depre by pressing down on the incision and now sealing up the incision ahead of time prior to fully removing the viscoelastic. Why is that? Again, you don't want the AC to be unstable. So you want to be very cautious because if you have instability in the AC, that may lead to the lens popping out of the bag, but also may lead to that extension or that rip out of the 
capsule rectus to go more and extend larger and go towards the posterior capsule. And again, you don't want that. So here, cleaning up quite nicely, taking out the remaining viscoelastic. Be gentle. Don't rotate the lens too much. I would not worry about going behind the IOL optic at all. And again, here this, in this uh, situation, don't let the AC collapse. And also, I wouldn't worry about polishing up the capsule. That's the least of your issues. Our goal is just to get out of town, get this case done. And I like how he's maintaining the infusion in the AC with the left hand while the right hand seals up the incision. So beautifully done. Good save. Very nice outcome for this patient. And remember, think twice before making a small or baby-sized capsule rexus. It could make your life more difficult and pose some challenges.